All right, third time's a charm. This is the third time I've tried recording this video, so hopefully this works. Last time it didn't record any sound. So each time it gets shorter. Last first one was 17 minutes and 14 minutes, and so maybe we'll get this one in 10. Let's get started. Vertex form. We are rewriting the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to convert it from standard form of a quadratic equation into this, which is called vertex form. And you might be thinking, why? Why do I need to do that? Well, this gives me some information. You know, this a value tells me if it's a happy face parabola or if it's a frowny face parabola. This c tells me where it crosses the y-axis, and that's really about it. We have to do more work to figure out everything else. This equation tells me the happy face parabola, if it's happy or sad, that is determined still by the value of a, but then this h comma k tells me the vertex of the graph. It tells me the highest point or the lowest point. It depends on if it's a happy or sad face, right? This one would have a low point, a minimum value. This one would have a maximum value. So that's what I can find by looking at this. So looking at this equation, we have x minus 2 squared plus 3. Remember, the minus is a part of the formula. So we just focus in on this value. It's a positive positive 2, positive 3, and we can look at the graph and see that work. At 2, 3, I have a point here, and that is the vertex of my graph. So let's try it. How do we go about converting something into vertex form? Well, the first thing that we have to do is group the ax squared plus bx, and then we zero in on this leading coefficient of the x squared term. If it's anything other than a positive 1, we have to factor it out. So since this is a negative one, we factor that negative one out. So I'm going to have negative one times x squared. Now, since I pulled out a negative one, I'm left with positive 12. I'm going to leave some space here and then minus nine. So now we just kind of focus in on this part here. Think of this as an unfinished puzzle, an unfinished math problem. We've got to complete it. So we want this to be a perfect square trinomial so that we can write it in the form of x minus h squared. We want x minus something squared. We don't know what that is yet, but we know that we can find it like we did in the previous lesson by doing half of that middle term, half of 12. We find that to be 6, and then when I square it, we get a 36 not plus 36, equals 36. So I'm going to throw that 36 in here. Now remember that this negative 1 is still out here. So when I put in this positive 36, really I put in a minus 36, right? Because if I distribute that negative 1, I have a negative 36. So in order to make my equation stay true, I need to come out here and add 36. Think about this. This is negative 1 times 36 is negative 36. If I add 36 out here, because this is all on the same side of the equal sign, here's my equal sign, really what I added was 0. Negative 36 plus 36 is 0. It doesn't look like 0 because I've got 36 and 36, but mathematically we know that on this side of the equal sign, if I was to combine these like terms, I really just added a 0, so I didn't change it. This is still the exact same equation, it just looks different. So now we can simplify. This is a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to rewrite it as y equals that negative 1, and I always have to focus in on this middle term. If it's positive, then we know it's going to be a plus 6. If it was negative, we know it would be minus. Okay, and then go ahead and combine my like terms out here. Negative 9 plus 36 is a positive 27. Now I have this written in vertex form. Now I like to write it the way their equation is written. It should be x minus my value of k. So since this is plus, to get a minus in here, I know it's going to be minus negative 6 plus my k value. So the vertex, which it doesn't ask me that, I'm working a little beyond, I'm overachieving, imagine that. Um, overachieving here, finding the vertex, I know my vertex is negative 6 comma 27. This is the equation written in vertex form. We could have stopped here, but if it asked me to find the vertex, we know it needs to be x minus h plus k, so my vertex is negative 6, 27. All right, so now I'm going to not scroll down. I want you to try this problem that you see right here. 
y equals x squared plus 8x minus 3. Pause the video, have it on a piece of paper, and try to work this problem out. Okay, I grouped my ax squared plus bx term together, put them in parentheses, and then I look to see, is this leading coefficient 1? And it is, so there's nothing to factor out. So then I just jump right into taking half of the middle term and squaring it. Half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16, so I throw in a 16. There's nothing out here, so I don't have to worry about, did I really put in a plus 16? Did I put in a minus 16? What did I put in here? Well, I put in a, a 16 because there's nothing out here. So if I plug in a positive 16, I know that I need to come out here and subtract 16 because 16 take away 16 is 0. So that would mean that I really didn't add anything. Now I can rewrite this in factored form or as a perfect square trinomial. We know that this is a positive 8, so this should be a positive 4, x plus 4 squared. And I just want to remind you real quick that x plus 4 squared is the same as x plus 4 times x plus 4. If I was to FOIL this out, in case you're wondering why I'm doing this, that gives me 4x plus 4x plus 16. This is x squared plus 8x plus 16. See, these are equivalent. This x plus 4 squared is the exact same as x squared plus 8x plus 4. It's just written in a more simplified form. And then I combine my like terms. Negative 3 minus 16 is negative 19. And then because, again, I'm an overachiever and I like for it to be written just like the formula up here, this a times x minus h squared plus k, this h is negative 4, minus a negative is the same as a positive, so to have a minus here, this must have been a negative 4, and plus my k, well, my k is negative 19, so this is the coordinates of my vertex. We know that it is a happy face parabola, it's positive x squared term, so it's a happy face, so this is my minimum value, and this is where the vertex is, and the axis of symmetry passes through that vertex. All right, so now let's try this one. This one's a little bit more complicated because this time I do have an A value. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. So I see that I need to factor out that 3. So if I factor out a 3, then that leaves me with negative 4x here plus 5. Okay, so I need to complete the puzzle piece. There's a missing piece right here. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to plug in a plus 4. Now it looks like I plugged in plus 4, but remember this 3 is out here. So 3 times 4 is 12. So really I put in a 12 right here, right? Is everybody with me? 3 times 4 is 12, so if I put in a 12, I need to come out here and put minus 12. Okay, so now we can rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial. That's the whole reason we did half of the middle term and squared it, so is that we could write it as a perfect square trinomial. Again, if I was to foil this back out, it's the exact same. And then I combine my like terms. So 5 take away 12 is 7, negative 7. So there it is. There's my equation written in um, vertex form. Now it says determine the vertex and determine the axis of symmetry. So remember, this minus is part of the formula. So it's a 2, but this should be a plus. So my vertex is 2, negative 7. Think about this. This is a happy face parabola right, because this is a positive, so this is my minimum value. We know that the axis of symmetry passes through that. So what is the equation of this vertical line? The equation of a vertical line is always x equals some number. Well, we know that this is 2 comma negative 7. So it looks something like this, right, 1, 2, and this is negative 7. So the equation of this line is x equals 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 2 and my vertex is 2 negative 7. All right, let's keep on going. The last problem, the best problem, right? A firework is launched one foot off the ground. So that's the initial height of the firework, which is what this h sub 0 is, the initial height. So we know we got to plug in a 1 for that. 
at a velocity of 128 feet per second. This V down here stands for velocity, so that's going to be 128. Write a function for the situation and then find and interpret the axis of symmetry. So the only thing we don't know is this G. I don't know if you guys have learned this yet, but gravity pulls on things at a rate of 32 feet per second squared. So this gravity is just 32. So my equation is really negative one half times 32, plugging in all the information, T squared plus my velocity, which is 128 feet per second, plus t plus the initial height which was one foot off the ground and this gives me the height after t seconds of my firework in feet off the ground so let's go ahead and simplify um a half of 32 is 16 so negative 16 t squared plus 128 t plus 1. We want to rewrite this equation in vertex form. So we see the leading coefficient is not 1. So we've got to get rid of that. We've got to factor that negative 16 out. So negative 16 factored out of negative 16t squared leaves me with t squared. Negative 16 factored out of 128 leaves me with negative 8t. Right? Negative 16 times negative 8 is a positive 128. And then I still have my plus 1 out here. Okay, so now we've got to figure out how we can write it as a perfect square trinomial. So we know that we have to take half of 4, or half of 8, which is 4, square it, which is 16. So I'm putting in a plus 16. But did I really just put in a plus 16? Pay attention to what's outside the parentheses. Negative 16 times a positive 16 is negative 256. So I've got to come out here and add 256. Okay, so now we can rewrite it in vertex form. Negative 16 times t squared minus 4. Again, this was a minus, so I know I need to make this minus 4 squared. Plus, combine my like terms, 256. Now we know that this is a frowny face parabola, right? It's a sad parabola. It's a negative parabola because this a value was negative. So that means that this is my maximum. So when it asks me to find and interpret the axis of symmetry, we know the axis of symmetry passes through that point, and that is here at negative 4, or actually it's at a positive 4 because the minus is part of the formula. So this is um, x equals 4 is where the axis of symmetry is. And what that tells me is that at 4 seconds, my parabola has reached, or my parabola, my firework has reached its maximum height and it is now falling. So for the first four seconds, it's shooting up into the air. Once it gets to four seconds, it starts falling back down out of the air. So that's what the axis of symmetry tells me. That's where the firework changes direction. And the vertex we know is four comma 256, oh, 257. I'm I, 1 plus 256 is 257, I'm sorry. So my vertex is 4, 257. So what that tells me is after 4 seconds, my firework reaches a maximum height of 257 feet in the air. It reaches a maximum height of 257 feet in the air, and then it starts falling back to the earth. So, hope that made sense. If you have any questions, please make sure to reach out to me, and I will do my best to answer them. Hopefully, this video worked. Have a great day, guys.